Welcome back to the U.S. Quidditch live stream here in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm Brad Wozniki, now joined by Chris Champito. This matchup, Maryland taking on Ball State, two teams that went three and one yesterday through pool play. We'll take you through what these two teams did in pool play. Mention their records. Ball State defeated Fighting Farmers 90 to 60. That was actually our first match of the day here on pitch one. Then Ball State, a 160 to 40 victory over Emerson, and Ball State defeating. Missouri in a high-scoring affair, 170 to 120, and finally, Ball State ended their day with a loss to Rutgers, 140 to 110. So Ball State finishing second in Pool One. And for Maryland, that's mentioned, three and one. They were victorious in their first match yesterday, 160 to 50 over British Columbia. And both teams fired up here early. It's Ball State getting on the board early. Second match for Maryland yesterday. They lost to Lone Star QC. Lone Star QC, one of the favorites. A final on that one of 190 to 60. Maryland defeating California 120 to 50. And Maryland also defeating Central Michigan 120 to 80. Chris, your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, Maryland's really got to push the pace in this one. Um, they're the big power in uh, the Mid Atlantic with uh, UNC, Penn State, and DC QC. Uh, leading with uh, what the region called the Big Four going into the season. Uh, look for them to speed up the pace, and Ball State really really needs to lay on the physicality against this highly athletic, high-tempo offense of Maryland. And this winner of this matchup will more than likely see Texas. Texas going to be taking on Oklahoma State. Texas, of course, fighting for an opportunity to try and four-peat. Haven't seen a run like that since Middlebury College. Turnover there for Ball State. Just over two minutes gone by. Chris, I'll ask you your thoughts on what this weekend's been like for you here at Saluda Shoals Park in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, this weekend's actually meant a lot to me. Um, I signed with the Navy in two weeks, so this is my last uh, guaranteed tournament. Um, rounded out with uh, UNC all four years. Uh, just dropped to um, Penn State. Uh, Mid-Atlantic regional rival. Um, they go up against most likely Rochester United, um, another team they've played, we've played. Um, so we're here, we're cheering on our region, but really at this point we just want good matches. Uh, this weekend's been one of the most memorable for me. Final score in North Carolina's loss to Penn State, 140 to 100. Well, if nothing less, we wish you nothing but the best going forward. Thank you, sir. 10 to nothing our score. Two and a half gone by here in this matchup. Bludger control is really dictating this match for Ball State. They're pressing that man defense of Maryland deep into their own keeper zone. Yeah. Ball State looking for an opportunity. Good Bludger play on both sides, and Ball State misses an opportunity there. The follow up now, and that's good. For Ball State, that was number one, Nick Kaufman. I believe it was, you mentioned earlier, earlier, number 52, Jake LeMay scoring the first one for Ball State. I believe so. Yep. And Maryland trying to respond, they do. That was a quick response. Fired up going back down the pitch, that was number 30, Dale Farnan. Brennan Hutton is probably one of the best pure passers in the game. Easy, easy lobs over the hoops, regardless of the athleticism of the keeper. Always puts it just out of the reach and lands them right into the pocket. Ball State came into the U.S. Quidditch Cup 9 with a record of 25 and 6. They made it to the Nationals the past four years, but last year did not qualify for bracket play. And you look at Maryland, this is a team that has high expectations given their history in the World Cup. Sweet 16 in World Cup 6, Sweet 16 in World Cup 7, and then last year, that Cinderella run made it to the Final Four in World Cup 8 at Rock Hill, South Carolina. I might still be a little salty about that game since they were our Elite Eight matchup. Always a good game against them, always love playing them. Yeah, what a tough team to play. 13.47 on the clock. 20 to 10 year score, Ball State leading Maryland. Brad was Nikki and Chris Champito with you. Quaffle so, controlled right now by Maryland. 
Hoffel loose for a moment, then picked up. That shot sails well above the intended target. That was Eric King on the attempt. Crowd applauding the effort there of Ball State. It was Bowling Green defeating New York QC in their previous matchup on this pitch. Bowling Green 110 to 50 victory over that one. Going to play the winner of Texas State and Rutgers. Ball State trying to create some space. Good bludger play there. Waffle to the left side right now. And Ball State trying to continue to create space in front. That one dropped down and Bludger play there. No. The shot no good. Waved off. Good Jeremy line. Den with a long range beat to stop that goal opportunity. And no matter there for Ball State, they still score. Now take a two goal lead approaching the 12 minute mark. Thirty to ten, your score. Opportunity here, Maryland trying to get it back to a one-goal match. That one flecked off the rim, and there to put it home, Eric King cleans up that mess. Eric King is really difficult to to guard, as as you can see by the stream. He's Got a lot to him. He's a big, solid guy. Um, I've run into him a few times, and it feels like running into a brick wall. And then you go to guard him, and he's got incredibly agile movements. So he's just a threat all around. In long range, in the hoops. And Bludger play there. Quaffle turned over. Kicked ahead, now picked up. Opportunity, no, that one off the post. Inside of 11 minutes. Quaffel in midfield, in the hands of Ball State. Ledger play, clears a little space. The wind has died down a little bit, helping the conditions for some of the longer tosses we're going to see out here. Yeah, it feels better. It feels better all day. Oh, it's been pretty long, so it's been good. Brendan Hutton picking up the quaffle. Chance for Maryland now to try and tie up this match. Almost eight minutes gone by. Hutton being pressured, uses quickness, found a teammate, Bludger play there, shot will not count. Here comes Ball State on the counterattack, right up the middle, no Bludger's home. Tackle unsuccessful, Quaffle loose, and that's good, good teamwork that time. That was good passing. He drew the beaters and two defenders into him, leaving her open on the short hoop side. Nine and a half on the clock. Look like Rebecca Sampson scoring that one. Goes by Becca. 40-20 year score. Good to see Ball State get back to that two goal lead. Still in snitch range. And Ball State now a chance to make it a three-goal lead. That was huge. Number 73, Jason Bowling scoring that. Inside of nine minutes. Where do you look for right now to try and see Maryland get some consistency at the offensive end? 
Maryland's, uh, they've got to go back to their game. Uh, right now they're struggling with that uh, Ball State bludger control. Ball State is an amazing team with bludger control. They really hold it down. Uh, they're, they can swap between man and zone real easy, and it's seamless in between their transitions. Um, as we saw, Maryland just got a goal, and uh, I believe uh, had control during the goal and then lost it just after the goal. But Maryland's really got to step up the pace again. Uh, Maryland's not used to the slow game. Um, it, as indicative of all the games uh, they play against other mid-Atlantic, uh, quote, powers. Their DCQC games are high-scoring affairs. Their UNC games are high-scoring affairs. Their Penn State games uh, upwards of 180, goal, 180 points on either side. Quaffle knocked away. Loose for a moment. Now a tie-up. Great pass and a score. That was Becca Sampson again for Ball State. Right on that borderline of snitch range, 7.35 on the clock. Maryland has to play their game. They just have to. Right now it's Ball State's game. Can Maryland speed up the pace of this match and try and get back into it? Stoppage in play, 7-18 on the clock, 60-30 in favor of Ball State. update for you on the scores? Uh, where uh, nothing's been posted yet. Um, Boise State coming out on top? Oh, Boise State. Boise State from the uh, Pacific Northwest, uh, the newest region in uh, the USQ. A lot of people discount uh, the Northwest as even a legitimate re uh, region. Um, some have even gone far enough to say that they, uh, they haven't earned their spot at uh, the Nationals uh, Cup. And Boise State showing them that you can't sleep on any team here. Every team here has earned a right to be here. Every team, every team can win any game if they play their own game. And it, it takes one bad game to, to end your day. And a huge goal to put it out of snitch range right now for Maryland. We are inside of seven minutes. Yes, Boise State, some people picking as a final four team. So keep your eye on that. Maryland needs a goal. Boise State captain was the snitch of the finals last year, so the seeking practices they must have must be <laughs> incredible. Big lob over the hoops. Maryland gets it right back to a three-goal match. Yeah, 70-40 your score, just over six minutes until the seeker floor. That one knocked down right in front. Getting his hand on that one was Garrett Sattler. <laughs> Arizona State and Texas Cavalry going on right behind us on pitch two. Arizona State the 18 seed, Texas Cavalry the 15 seed. This matchup to Maryland and Ball State, 17 versus 16. 5.30 now on the clock. Nick Kaufman gets it back for Ball State. Quaffle picked up. Opportunity picked up by Lowe's. And great defense there. That was Kaufman with the tackle. And Brooms down. Big hit there. We got a yellow card. We have a yellow card. 
Cody Nardone with the ball for Maryland. And Liz is called Ebling on the short side hoop. Look for the pass over and the quick score. Exactly five minutes on the clock, 70-40 in favor of Ball State, but in a moment here, should be 70-50. Could be. With the beater behind him, he should look to pass to Liz. That one knocked down, no goal. They didn't listen to your coaching technique right there. What's the middle of duty, yeah? Coaching <laughs> advice, I should say. Go on, I'll source this time. Now Ball State trying to respond, they do. Huge, huge turn of events right yeah. there. And a miscue on the Ball State beaters giving Maryland bludger control. Inside of four and a half minutes. Still do not have the points put up on the board. Should be 80-40, though, advantage Ball State. I believe the last goal was called no good beat before. Okay. So it remains in snitch range for Maryland. Another chance here for Ball State inside of four minutes. Waffle knocked away for a moment. Dangerous throw. The Ball State beater complaining there was a beat with her fist up. In the rule book, if your fist is up, you are immune from beats, meaning the knockout effect, but they can still throw a ball at you as a distraction or to disorient. Big play there. 3.30 on the clock. Snitch starting to get loose across from us. Long throw, shot comes up short. Two-handed toss attempt that time. Ball State with a chance, they push it ahead. And great pressure there, able to knock that one away, Garrett Sadler. So Sadler's defense keeps this one in snitch range. At least a chance right now, if things stay the way they are, for Maryland to force this into overtime. If Maryland can pull the snitch, force overtime and win, Sadler may, may be the team MVP with his defensive stops this game. Yeah. Merrick can do that. Yeah, Merrick can do that. Eric King behind the hoops. And King just muscles out of the tackle. Score is good. Yeah, I, we see That's a we big see boy to tackle before. from experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've seen Merrick do that before, last in like two years ago in that regional. 220 on the clock. Cup. Maryland and Ball State doing battle in bracket play of U.S. Quidditch Cup 9 here in Columbia, South Carolina. Brad was Nikki and Chris Champito with you here for this one. With the two-minute warning, Seekers are mentally preparing themselves, wondering why all of a sudden they have to use the bathroom again. <laughs> Opportunity here for Ball State. Being patient at the offensive end. It's Matt Brown with the call for a moment inside of 90 seconds. If the score stands during the snitch catch, the snitch will decide the outcome of this game. Stoppage in play. I believe they're calling a throw after. Quaffle will be in possession of Ball State. The defense we've seen so far from Garrett Sattler, that could change quickly. Opportunity here, Ball State on the attack. That one flipped in and good. 
That's Matt Brown, 80-50 your score. Inside of a minute. Again, the winner of this one will move on to play the winner of Texas and Oklahoma State. King behind the hoops. King had it knocked away there. Three different Ball State players coming at King there. That's what it takes to stop him. They've got to throw it at him every time. 20 seconds on the game clock. The snitch is on the pitch, getting loose. Final seconds. And here come the Seekers. They attack it. Ball State with the first opportunity. As Jason Bowling, their seeker, he avoids a bludger for a moment. Current UMD seeker. UMD with a long one on one with the snitch here if he can go in. Ben oh, just Wong, out of range the current now. seeker right now for Maryland. Getting a little protection to the snitch. Well, that's out of range, right? 90 50. Bowling doing his best trying to get around. The seeker for Maryland. Taken down for a moment. Right now, Ball State needs some help with bludger play if they're going to get this one done. For those of you unaware, seekers, the contact allowed between seekers is significantly, I'm not going to say lighter, but they, it is a much, quote, safer position between contact with another player. The snitches, however, like to make it a little more physical. Uh, seekers can't tackle each other, they can't wrap each other, they have to keep a straight arm the whole time. 90-50 year score will resume play here right now. Talk about True Snitch himself. Maryland Ball State looking to advance. Lawful shot denied there. Ball State quickly the other way. Chance to go up by five goals they do. And Ball State with the tail in hand. Both teams are waiting for either a triple whistle or a no call catch. And that's it. Ball State advances. So Maryland, the not the run we saw nice. last year. Your final score in this one, 120 to 50. So Ball State gonna play the winner now of Texas at Oklahoma State. What a great performance here from Ball State. It was, it was a beautiful game. Uh, Ball State uh, really played their game. They didn't. Uh, they didn't let Maryland dictate the pace, which um, a lot of teams, uh, first few times playing them, uh, just try and go out there and see that Maryland runs the ball at them, and they think, okay, well, if they're going to be that offensive, they can't have a defense. But Maryland really surprises you with the defense, and Ball State came out, held bludger control, made them play a chaser defense against the bigger Ball State line. A couple of matches to update you on. Texas State defeating Rutgers 150 to 50. Oh, no. So Texas State will now play Bowling Green. And then DCQC defeating Kansas 90 to 30. Good win from the East Coast team. Yeah. And then Texas Tech coming out on top. Excuse me. Yes, it was Texas Tech 